So we've been talking about how soil tests are performed in the lab and what kind of extraction solution we use and what it means and some of those things. Well, the important part is what do you do with the soil test once you get the report? And that's uh, what I'd like to really talk about. And I always like to start with pH because I'm, I always want to know what is in the soil to begin with. And the pH can tell you a lot about uh, where you're from and uh, how the soil has been taken care of in the past. And if the pH is between 6 and 7.3, I think you have an ideal pH and you're in great shape. Everything's going to be uh, available as, as, as best as it can be. So if the pH is less than 6, now we got to consider putting on lime. And of course, the lime uh, amount is determined by the buffer pH. And the, the buffer pH measures total acidity, where pH measures the available acidity. And so the buffer pH you look at, the lower it is, the more lime that you have to put on, kind of a, just to kind of keep that in mind. If the pH is 7.4 or above, that means you have an alkaline soil and you probably need to plant crops or plant plants that are tolerant to high pH or alkaline conditions. And we'll just kind of leave it at that. There might be a way to change pH over time, but it, it, we can talk about that another time. In organic matter, uh, that I always like to look at that to see how, how good the soil is in, in your area. And a lot of times in, for gardens and those kind of things, you see high pH knowing that a lot of compost or lawn clippings or something's been added. So the organic matter uh, tells me how well the soil has been taken care of in the past and if there's been soil erosion and some of those kind of things. So I, I look at that just as general information. And then I go to the nutrients and the first one I look at is nitrate. And uh, at the end of harvest or after harvest, we'd like to see the nitrate at five parts per million or less. That means it did a good job of utilizing nitrogen fertilizer. And sometimes I see nitrogen tests uh, where the nitrogen pounds per acre would be up over 100 pounds per acre. And it, it means that you've been putting too much nitrogen on and that you need to reduce the nitrogen application rate and, and make sure you use up that nitrate that's in the soil because it's going to be available for the next crop. And it's like fertilizer. Then phosphorus tests, uh, if you have a really low test, we need to put phosphorus on. If the test is above 25 part per million, you probably don't need to put any phosphorus on for a year. Or you can put on uh, maybe 40, 30 or 40 pounds just to kind of maintain the soil test there. But if the soil test is like at 5 or 10, then you need to really put on uh, an 80 to 100 100 might be a little high, but 80 to 100 pounds of uh, phosphate. P205 is what I call it, uh, the fertilizer uh, phosphate uh, compound. And, and uh, then if you have really high tests, that means you've been putting too much fertilizer on or, too, uh, or compost and that you need to reduce that rate to stop putting uh, phosphorus because it can contaminate ground or uh, water systems so that uh, we'll get blue-green algae growing and some of those kind of things. So it's careful that we manage the phosphorus to be around 25 parts per million. If it's less, we need to put some on. If it's more than that, we don't need to put any on. And potassium, kind of the same way. And on our really high yields, I like to see the potassium test above 200. A lot of uh, uh, state extension, uh, say uh, 150 or 120 was adequate on parts per million, but uh, uh, and the high yields, I kind of like to see that up to 200. And the potassium fertilizer can be applied if you're uh, down in that 100 part per million range. And then we go with sulfur. As, you know, we've cleaned up the air quite a bit on the sulfur, and so we don't get much free sulfur anymore from the industry. And so we need to really consider a uh, sulfur application. And I would uh, probably look at uh, something like a 10 to 1 ratio of 10 parts of nitrogen and 1 part sulfur. If you get above about 30 pounds of sulfur, you probably don't need to put any more than that on. But uh, that's kind of the way I would look at how to add sulfur. And then we get into the trace elements. And in a lot of areas of, of uh, the Great Plains anyway, zinc is a one that we really have to watch. And if it's above one part per million, we're okay. If it's less than one, then we should be putting some zinc on. Uh, iron. Uh, 
it's uh, difficult to fertilize for iron, but if you have a test less than 4.5, you're probably going to have iron chlorosis. You need plant plants that are more resistant to iron chlorosis problems. Manganese, uh, it seems like manganese is getting lower in our soils, and so if the test is below about three or two and a half, then you need to put manganese on. If it's above that, we don't, uh, don't need to worry about adding any manganese. And copper, most of the time I like to see the copper above 0.2 part per million. There are a few people that would like to see that at 0.6 part per million, but I, uh, I think in 0.2 is adequate in most of our soils that I'm acquainted with. And, and so those are some ideas of how you might use your soil test report. Now, if we make fertilizer recommendations for you, uh, then that's reported in pounds of nutrients that's needed per acre. And we also give the lime recommendation in tons per acre. So uh, if you uh, have the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, zinc, manganese that you might need, you can go to a fertilizer deal and have a mix made up so you can get that fertilizer applied.